perhaps I should just quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> 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 to be honest with you, I don't think I've been this nervous since the 12th of May, 1967. <clears throat> I just bailed out of my airplane upside down, <clears throat> about 2,000 feet above the ground, and everything worked as it should have worked. And I struck the ground <clears throat> and was captured immediately. About 10 little Vietnamese soldiers <clears throat> put their rifles at me. And then there was one that was even smaller. He came with a pistol and he <laughs> had to stand up to put it against my head. And immediately I began to understand Vietnamese, right away. <laughs> they tied my flight suit around my head <clears throat> and led me over to a village and there was still a big fight going on above us. Bombs were falling, missiles were coming every which way. And all of a sudden, these people began to laugh amid all of that. And I wondered, you know, why are they laughing? Then I suddenly realized that on that particular day, I wore a pair of white Fruit of the Loom shorts with big red crabs on them. <laughs> You know, I, I believe that Fruit of the Loom would pay me $1,000 for that picture today. <laughs> I want to be <clears throat> more serious and say that I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the opportunity that I had to serve our nation. It was a <clears throat> certainly a noble and worthwhile job that I had and I enjoyed every bit of it except <clears throat> for those few unpleasant days in Hanoi. I thought back while I was in Hanoi about <clears throat> my youth and I was born about 10 miles away from here. The old home place is now covered over by the Douglas Reservoir. But I remember there being with my granddad and how much I love being on the farm being with him and doing all of the things that he did. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever think that I would be able to fly an airplane. But along came World War II, and <clears throat> my brother was drafted into the infantry in July 1942, and it left a real void in my life and in my heart. I was 18 at that point in time and I waited until I was 19 years old and then I persuaded my mother and father to let me join the Air Force. And again, I had no idea what I was doing. I had ROTC while I was in high school, but I had no idea what all went on in the Air Force. But as I <clears throat> got acclimated to the situation, I learned a lot of things. And I was just like a sponge. I was absorbing information all along. And the next thing you know, I was promoted to corporal. My pay went up from $50 a month to 66, and that was really something. But about that time, the first sergeant put a notice on the board, anyone who is interested in going to flying school sign up. And I signed up, was accepted, went through flying school, flew P-51s, P-40s, and then the war ended. I came back to Tennessee and <clears throat> it took me a little while to get my life in order. I had married shortly after I graduated to the girl of my dreams. And uh, for 62 years and nine months, we shared our souls as we traveled throughout the world serving our nation. 
it was my good fortune to travel to 29 different countries and to work and plan and fly with all of those people. My job was to build relationships with those who served in the armed forces, and that's what I wanted to do. The situation in Vietnam was such that for <clears throat> 1,004 days, I sat in a room that was seven feet square in solitary confinement. I had a lot of time to think about my character, about my family, about my friends, about our country. And then eventually the war ended, I came back. And at that point in time, I had 28 years of service, <clears throat> but I wanted to requalify. I was not going to quit the Air Force until I could fly again. So I was allowed to fly again, and then to go back and to command the base that I graduated from 30 years before. So the Air Force did not penalize me for the time that I spent in the prison camp. And so I'm indebted to the Air Force and to the government for the opportunity to continue to serve. We have a great country. It's not a perfect country, but it is a great country. We have freedoms that many people even never even dream about. And it's up to us to maintain those freedoms. We need to pass on that which has been handed down to us. And so the mantle of responsibility now falls upon the shoulders of those who are much younger than myself. Fortunately, five weeks ago, I passed 88 years old. And I'm still a fighter. I'm still a fighter for American, American ideals and American freedom. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you.